My name is Jose Stevens, and I'm the chief engineer for spaceship propulsion at the Spaceship Company, sister company to Virgin Galactic. In other words, my team and I have the awesome job of designing, building, and testing all the rocket motors <clears throat> which power Spaceship 2 into space. We also design, build, and integrate all the supporting systems such as tanks, tubes, and valves. I'm speaking to you live from the headquarters of the Spaceship Company in Mojave, California. This is where Virgin Galactic spaceships are built and tested. This science with Virgin Galactic Space Shack is focused on rocket motors, and for that, I chose my favorite room in the building. Welcome to our sixth live space chat. Last week, Ford just shared what it's like being a test pilot and how we test our spaceships in the air. How many of you can remember some of the things you presented? First, what do our pilots practice their flights in? And second, what are the three major phases of flight testing a spaceship? If you watched last week, put your answers into the chat and we'll go over the correct answers at the end of today's space chat. Today, we're gonna to learn about real life rocket science and some of the cool things about a rocket motor. But before we get into the details, let me tell you a little about myself. Growing up, I loved playing sports and spent most of my time outside playing every sport I could. Even though I thought I was pretty decent at baseball, don't, don't ask my friends or the family about that. I always wanted to be a pilot and astronaut, probably because my father worked on all sorts of planes during his 21 years in the Air Force. Basically, I wanted to be like our Virgin Galactic pilot. After being told by the Air Force Academy that because of my eyesight, I would not fly fighter aircraft, I decided I'd rather go to MIT and learn as much as possible about aerospace and aerospace engineering. After getting a bachelor's degree, I wanted to learn more, so I moved to California and I studied at Stanford University for both a master's and PhD in aeroastro engineering. During my career, I've traveled around the world launching satellites, Florida, French Guiana, and the Russian Cosmodrome in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where I met my beautiful wife. I started working with hybrid rockets similar to the one used on Spaceship 2 about 19 years ago. So let's get started on today's topic, rocket motors. Some of you might be wondering why we use a rocket motor instead of a jet engine on our spaceship. Well, a jet engine uses oxygen in the air to burn with onboard fuel to create thrust or force that pushes that vehicle forward. Look at our mothership, the MS Eve. The jet engines on Eve pull in oxygen from the air and combine it with jet fuel to create the thrust need to carry spaceship up to release altitude. But spaceship goes so high that it leaves about 99% of the Earth's atmosphere, which means there's not enough oxygen to create thrust. Rockets still need oxygen, so instead of using oxygen in the air, they carry their own oxygen to burn with the fuel, referred to as an oxidizer. This onboard oxidizer allows spaceships to travel through the atmosphere and into space. Here's an activity you can do at home. Grab a balloon, your balloon is your rocket motor, and if you blow it up with air, you've added propellant. When you let go of the balloon, the air inside gets pushed out by the elastic material of the balloon, creating thrust and making your balloon fly around the room. Okay, so now we know the difference between a jet engine and a rocket, and why we need a rocket for our spaceship. But what rocket do we use? There are three types of rockets. Solid rocket, we have liquid rocket, and hybrid rocket. Let me start by explaining each bit. Solid rockets are made of solid components of fuel and oxidizer mixed together and inserted into a combustion chamber for storage and then burning. Liquid rockets use two fluids stored in tanks that are injected into a combustion chamber where they are burned. A hybrid is a combination of a solid and liquid rocket, usually the fuel is stored as a solid in the combustion chamber, and the oxidizer is stored as a fluid in a separate tank. When it's time to operate the rocket, the fluid oxidizer is injected into the combustion chamber to burn with the fuel. Solid rockets are simple since there are no fluid systems required, 
that they are not as safe as rocket type as as other rocket types due to the fuel and oxidizer being pre-mixed. If combustion starts, it is difficult or impossible to stop. Think of a model rocket or firework. Once you light the fuse, there's no stopping it. Once we are flying people on our spaceships, we want the option to turn off our rocket in case of any emergency. So solid rockets weren't right for they weren't right for us. So what about liquid rockets? Liquid rockets are complex because the fluid systems need to get those propellants from their storage tanks into the combustion chamber. They also have higher performance than solid rockets because of the wider choice of propellants. And unlike solid rockets, liquid rockets can be shut down by stopping the flow of propellant into the combustion chamber. But their complexity means they're incredibly heavy rocket systems. And as Mike Moses explained with Legos a few weeks ago, the heavier the system, the bigger the spaceship has to be. We didn't want a big, heavy system, so liquid rockets weren't right for us either. For our spaceship, we chose the hybrid option, which takes the simplicity of the solid rocket and the performance and safety of the liquid rocket and combines them into a unique system all its own. Hybrid rockets are not as complex as liquid rockets since they only require half of the fluid systems, but are more complex than solid rockets since they have separate components. Hybrid systems are safe as well, safer as well by storing things separately and in different states, a solid and a liquid. The components won't accidentally mix together until you want them to. This also means we can shut down the rocket motor by stopping the flow of the oxidizer into the solid fuel. For our solid component, we use a compound similar to skateboard wheels. This compound is stored inside the main portion of our rocket system, the case, throat, and nozzle. For the liquid component, we use nitrous oxide stored in the belly of our ship in the main oxidizer tank. This is the same nitrous oxide used by doctors and dentists as an anesthetic by some popular fast car movies. To start the rocket motor, the liquid nitrous oxide is pushed into the combustion chamber and like ignited, starting the reaction between the oxidizer and fuel, and off we go. So how powerful is our rocket motor? Our rocket motor is about 70,000 pounds of thrust or about 312,000 newtons if you use a metric system and stays on for about 60 seconds. A pound of thrust is about how much force it would take to keep a one pound object unmoving against the force of gravity on Earth. And since we light the rocket motor at around 45 to 50,000 feet, where there is slightly less gravity, and our spaceship is much lighter than 70,000 pounds, that's a lot of thrust to propel a spaceship up and away towards space in one minute. In our previous space chats, we mentioned that we are building a fleet of spaceships. With testing and commercial service, this means we're gonna need a lot of rocket motors. Right now, we can build about two rocket motors each month. We are designing and planning a more factory-like rocket motor production facility so we can produce more like 25 rocket motors each month. That's, that's a lot of rocket motors. Now, before we ever put one of these rocket motors on our spaceships, they go through all kinds of testing. A lot of work went into designing, designing this rocket motor, making sure it was safe, reliable, lightweight, and easy to handle during ground processing. After the motor is built, we do pressure testing to make sure the motor doesn't leak. We also conduct a CAT scan on the motor to look for any internal imperfections. A CAT scan is a fancy computerized x-ray that shows minute internal details. And best of all, we hot fire some of these rocket motors on our test stand during the development and qualification phases. That's a huge benefit to working out in the desert. After we design and build our rocket motors, we get, the, we get to test them really close to home. Here's a quick video putting you next to the action at our test site. And best of all, when a rocket motor is completed and ready to be used on a flight, we get to see all of our hard work truly and quite literally take off. These remarkable rockets will get to fulfill the lifelong dreams of hundreds, if not thousands of people by propelling them up into the blackness of space to see our beautiful planet from above. Okay, so now it's time for some questions from all of you. All right, first question I have here is from Robbie King of Michigan. Is the rocket motor reusable? Uh, unfortunately, no, the rocket motor is not reusable, but the rest of the system is, of course, reusable. Um, another question from Kaylee, who is nine, and Serena, who is seven, in Canada. 
what was the first spaceship you worked on? Actually, and the question goes on, was it Unity or were there others before that? Nope, the first spaceship I ever worked on was Unity. I've worked on satellites, but not quite spaceships. So the first true spaceship I worked on was Unity. Uh, next question is from Chico, Chloe, sorry, Chloe Fenn in Phoenix. What's the most fun part of building a rocket motor? Um, well, for me, the most fun is actually hot fire testing of the rocket motor, as you saw in the video. So those are, those give you um, the most satisfaction of actually building a rocket motor because it's gone through all the testing except for that final part. And that gives you great closure to the whole build and test process up to that final point. Uh, here's another question from Maya Jackley from New, New Mexico. How hot is rocket motor? Is the rocket motor flame? Oh, that rocket motor flame can get quite hot, up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, let's see. Um, another question from Gene Simon. Do you think humans will ever be able to travel at the speed of light? I do think one day we may be able to travel at the speed of light, but it won't be using these chemical rockets we now have these days because uh, just trying to get that much energy because it requires will require quite a bit of, of energy to get any type of vehicle to go to the speed of light. That much energy probably wouldn't be possible to get out of a chemical rocket. So we'll have to come up with some different technology to be able to get to the speed of light. Okay, that is all the questions we have time for today. So thank you very much for those questions. Um, before we end today's space chat, let's go over those answers for what you learned last week. First, put the pilots practice their flights in. Pilots practice their flights in a simulator, performing the same flight patterns and maneuvers just like they would in a spaceship. And second, what are the three major phases of flight testing a spaceship? The three major phases of flight testing are captive carry, with Spaceship 2 firmly held under the mothership, glide flight, where Spaceship 2 releases from our mothership, fly and flies using her own wings, and powered flight, where we use my favorite part of the spaceship, our rocket motor. If you want to try launching your own rockets, but in a much safer way using only air as your propellant, head to galacticunite.com slash kids corner and check out the paper rocket lesson. Be sure to share your flights with us on social media by using hashtag Science with Virgin Galactic. Thanks for watching the Science with Virgin Galactic Space Chat. This episode is the last in the series, but we'll be back soon with more YouTube Lives hosted by people from across the world's first commercial space line. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube to be notified as soon as more videos go live on our channel. And don't forget, you can still watch previous episodes by checking out the homepage of our channel. Be well, and we'll see you soon. Here's a recap of our Space Chat series.